As of this recording, the only Ruger P-Series pistols still in my stable are the 944 and the 345. I got rid of the 95s because they didn't work. I got rid of the 90 because I need another 45, like I need a 45 caliber hole in my head, and I'm planning to get rid of this 944 as well. But it won't be easy since it's one of the worst 40 caliber pistols ever made. Before it rides off into the sunset with some lucky boomer, let's take a closer look at it. The Ruger P944 is the version of the Ruger 94 chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. The 94 was the last of the P-series pistols to use the old style of alloy frame before they switched to glass nylon reinforced polymer with the 95. The P95 also used a more modern cam block recoil system instead of the older swinging link style. And around that time, the 94 was redesigned to use the cam block as well. The 94 and 944 stayed in production, I think, until 2011. My 944 is from before the switch. You can easily tell a cam block 944 from the square of black plastic just behind the slide release. The cam block guns are probably slightly more durable than the swinging link guns, but that black plastic square is fuck ugly and it gets in the way when you try to drop the slide, so I can take it or leave it. The 944 was initially sold with 11 round standard capacity magazines, like the Ruger 91, but when the 1994 assault weapons ban went into effect, the mags were limited to 10 rounds, and after the AWB sunset in 2004, Ruger never bothered to bring back the original 11 rounders. I have one 11 rounder for my 944, and it looks identical to the 10 rounders in all respects, but it has the magical ability to hold one extra round. Weird, but cool, I guess. If you're curious, I've tried using the Mechgar produced Ruger P-Series magazines that are only intended for 9mm in my 944. They will feed and cycle all but the last round of the magazine, even the 20 rounders. It's kind of interesting, but ultimately not that useful. I spiced up my 944 by installing Williams fire sights, fiber optic front and rear fixed sights. I like them a lot. They're a significant quality of life improvement over the factory dot sights, and they seem way more durable than most chintzy fiber optics. The factory grip panels on the 944 are the waffle pattern design, but I've also tried the Hogue rubber grips and Hogue G10 grip panels. The G10 grips do look cool, but the more I shoot it, the more I like the big Hogue wraparounds. I mean, there's no way I'll use this gun for social purposes. It's a range toy full stop. Might as well enjoy those soft, hand-filling rubber grips. Shooting the 944 along with some other 40 caliber pistols shows it to be about on par accuracy-wise. The triggers on the P-Series guns aren't the best. The pull weight is light and single action, but the trigger is sloppy. The fiber sights on my 944 are high visibility, but also pretty coarse, so it doesn't do great, but it's far from an inaccurate gun. The 944 is big and heavy and handles the recoil of a 40 Smith & Wesson reasonably well. It's softer shooting than a 40 Sigma, for example, but not as controllable. There's quite a bit of muzzle flip. Guns like the Sigma are what give the 40 caliber cartridge a reputation for being snappy, but the 944 makes 40 feel more like 45 plus P. It was nice to take the 944 out for another spin before selling it off. The only P series I want right now is one I've still never had, a KP-89D. Or maybe a KP-93D, if I can find it. They're rare. Anyway, that's it. So, goodbye. I hope you're ready for Lara Bar the Squeak Wolf. This is the. Whoop, uh oh. I lose control of the car. The Mint Chip Brownie. It's pretty good. This is probably the best one I've ever had. It doesn't taste like a Mint Chip Brownie because it tastes like cashews and dates, but there's definitely some chip and there's definitely some mint. This one's pretty good.